Hey everybody, welcome back again to Ken Tamplin Vocal Academy where the proof is in the singing. I'm continuing a really cool series and this series is I'm taking isolated vocal tracks or vocal stems as they're called. Uh, I'm doing an analysis of the voice. Uh, I'm giving you a tutorial on how the singing was done. But I'm also doing something extra special for you guys that wanna know how to record really good vocals. I've got 40 records out. Yes, I've recorded 40 of my own albums, so I know a lot about the recording process, and I have literally hundreds of songs placed in film and television. You can either go to my Wikipedia page, or you can go to imdb.com, type in my name, you'll see the different uh, movie soundtracks I've done, the TV series Baywatch, uh, X-Files, theme for Ace Ventura, I've done a lot of stuff over the years. So I know quite a bit about the recording process, and I've had the opportunity to work with some pretty heavy hitters, Mick Guzowski, you know, uh, Andy Johns, um, you know, guys who work with Led Zeppelin, you know, Mick Kuzowski from the Daft Punk, recent Daft Punk album. Just lots and lots of amazingly talented engineers. So I've learned a lot about the recording process and I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna have you peer into some of that because one of my biggest jobs in film and television was to do what are called takedowns. What is a takedown? Takedown is, uh, when they can't afford an original song and they want to reduplicate it, they used to call it in the likeness of, and they would call somebody like Ken Tamplin uh, to come over and get the instrumentation and the vocals and everything to sound almost identical, or in lots of cases identical, and maybe in some cases even better than the original track. So that's why I know a lot about recording. But before we get started, please like and subscribe to my channel. That would be really cool. I have a singing course. It's called How to Sing Better Than Anyone Else. You can find it right here at Ken Tamplin VocalAcademy.com. And again, I've got over 20,000 members of singers in here all negotiating this stuff to, to make you great at singing. So I wanna get started, if I repeated myself, sorry, but um, I wanna get started on this. Now, um, it's interesting because when I get these stems, I never know what condition they're in. And in this case, this one's pretty dry, right? And so there's not a lot of effect on it. So we have to go back and listen to the original and see how it was affected, but that's the recording side. So stick around for that. That's gonna be towards the end. We're gonna just dive right into the vocal itself. We're gonna take a listen and we're gonna dissect it one, one lick at a time. Here we go. Shake it up is all that we know. Using the bodies. Up as we go. Now, right there, you'd think that use, using your bodies, like on bodies, he's a little flat. Now, I'm not here to just pick apart these guys and say, you know, here's where they made this mistake, here's where they made that mistake. My intent is to put some flesh and blood on this for you guys to take a listen to these guys that made it all the way to the top and stayed there for a long, a lot of period, long period of time, a lot of period, um, and uh, to show you that it's doable. This stuff is doable. You can do it. Now, this is behind a red light where he gets to do this over and over again. Now, he was also an is, you know, live at Daryl's house. We still see him to this day doing still cool stuff. But, um, you know, this was at his pinnacle, at his peak. And at this time, too, I want to add one more little side note to this. At this time, um, music in the 70s and then on into the 80s or whatever, starting kind of from the 60s, um, was so unique. I mean, it was just like, uh, one minute you have Led Zeppelin and then you've got Elton John and then you've got, um, you know, Hall and Oates or whatever. And then you've got, I mean, I can, and then kind of later on, you know, you have Wham and all these, you know, the British invasion of pop and rock. And, and then, you know, punk had just come off of that and you had disco, like all these amazing, you know, uh, genres and, and, and influence was happening kind of all at the same time. And everything was so unique. So Hall and Oates comes on the scene, kind of like, well, like I said, what happened with George Michaels and Wham and other, other bands where they just like were so unique and just did so something so spectacular and different that it really just stuck right and I just came off of doing Billy Joel and another vocal stem analysis I mean it didn't matter where it came from it was all very very unique very uh, personalized to the artistry of each one of these guys so let's do this again but I want you to listen to how he gets a little flat on it and my goal isn't just to point out their errors or you know their mistakes is to point out that they're human and they didn't care so much about making everything absolutely perfect, but that it caught the core of what they're trying to say with the song. Okay, here we go. Check it out. Shake it up is all that we know. Using the bodies up as we go. I'm waking up to fantasy. The shades all around aren't the colors we used to see. Now, 
Shaking up is all that we know. Like you can hear him strain. It's not like it's just distortion. He's actually kind of straining a little bit to get to some of those notes. Now that tension is also cool, and that's what we like about the soul in his voice. But he's he's kind of like towards the peak of his upper, you know, belting register or call uh, chest voice register, and he does some falsetto stuff. And he's got a lot of soul, a lot of swag in his phrasing and stuff. We're gonna hear that when we put the actual music on. But I wanted to point that out that along the way is he's kind of at the top of his range and you can hear him stretch and he's not even using that great of support so it's kind of like you can hear him singing and struggling in the throat a bit though that's also part of his tone okay let's continue broken ice still melts in the sun and ties that are broken can often be one again we're so alone and so really matters to me take a look around Take a look around. You're out of touch. I'm out of time. But I'm out of my head when you're not around. Now, he's a unique artist, too, in the sense that the velocity of the volume that he uses, you know, so bam and go. Just using your body said No, he gets real, <laughs> that was pitchy, sorry about that. There's my mistakes. No, but um, he, he uses a lot of velocity. One minute he's really loud, and the next minute he backs off, and then he's got a lot of like soul swag in between. So there's a lot of dynamic range to his sound, which I also find interesting, because not a lot of people do that. Very few people do that, actually. And uh, so I can only imagine how tough it was to capture maybe a couple couple different compression settings, um, you know, in the way he would sing to go back and forth to capture the soft and the heavy, okay? You're out of touch, I'm out of time, but I'm out of my head when you're not around. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh, oh. Now, we talk a lot about open throat technique and he's not using it. <laughs> and here I'm praising this guy, Ken, you talk so much about teaching open throat technique. I do. <laughs> um, so if you notice, I can actually, you know, you're out of touch, I'm out of time. Right, I can get to his sound if I want. In fact, I did do Sarah Smile. You can check out and see how I did on that. I'll put that in the description. I haven't done a lot of Hall & Oates stuff. I probably should, and I'll get to that when I can. But um, with open throat technique, you can get to this sound, but his sound can't get to a bigger sound, so it stays really small and compressed. So, you know, uh, just know that as we're doing some of this stuff. Um, I want to praise the artist of the artistry because it's Daryl Hall. I mean, one of the greatest blue-eyed soul singers of all time, and one of the top-selling artists of all time for his genre and era. So I, you know, I want to, you know, give credit where credit's due. But I also want to point out that it's it's character singing. It's just his very unique style, uh, and it worked for him. And so, you know, he uses it to his full advantage. Reaching out for something to hold. See, something to hold. You can even he's like. Reaching for it, <laughs> reaching out for something to hold. Looking for a love where the climate is cold. Now, he also kind of gets into a man. Looking for da da da, climate is cold. Right, you can hear him bring some air, almost a little bit of mixed voice down at the bottom, which is kind of interesting, which is how he brings in his soul. Now, I remember when I was doing Sarah Smile, I remember that his phrasing is so unique. The reason I brought up Wham and uh, George Michael is I also did a, you know, a Wham song, or not a Wham song, a George Michael song, uh, Freedom 90, and I remember how hard it was to match the phrasing. It's like, you don't just go in, <laughs> one doesn't just go in and sing like George Michael's, or in this case, John Hall, because they're so unique in their phrasing. It's pretty tough to match their stuff. So you kind of got to just be yourself and capture the spirit of it, so to speak. And that's another very, very unique thing about John that's cool. My moves, drowsy and his note choices. Living in let's, wait, let's go back to this too. You can hear his uh, use of head voice here. Check it out. Moves, drowsy dreams. Live uh, between right, it's kind of cool. And in the middle, between the two extremes, smoking guns, hot to the touch, would cool down if we didn't use them so much. Yeah. Now, if you notice, um, we've talked a lot about this. If you want, I want you to go back, and I want you to listen to when he sings something high. And I want you to notice that when he comes off and he uses air and he covers the sound, he's flat 
almost every single time. Now, it's a little bit imperceptible, like you don't really notice it unless you're really listening for it. But if you were to put it on a flat meter, so to speak, you notice that when we've talked a lot about this in my singing course, I cover all this stuff, that when you darken or cover a sound or add that air, there's a tendency for it be, to be perceptibly flat or legitimately flat. And in this case, he does it almost every single time. I don't wanna take the time to go back and replay it, but I want you to know that that's part of it. But then that's kind of soul singers. A lot of soul singers do that anyway. So I did wanna point that out along the way also. We're so all alone and so really matters to me see so really matters to me like all that's not really perfect but it's cool because it fits in the track really well we talked about these carbuncles which makes it human which it's living and breathing instead of it just being like robotic and auto-tuned and just you know real stiff and cut and pasting every chorus where everything sounds exactly the same which is unfortunately a lot of today's music so too much here we go. You're out of touch. Yeah. You're out. Let's a little show. Hey, listen. You're out of touch. It's a little pitchy. I'm out of time, but I'm out of my head when you're not around. You're out. I'm not around. Hear that flat every time. And you're not around. Hear you're that? out of touch. I'm out of time, but I'm out of my head when you're not around. Oh, 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 like I said, I love his, he doesn't have a ton of range, though he has range in that he sings kind of on the higher end of the spectrum for his sound, uh, but it's the way he arranges his note choices that makes it unique and, and you want to hear it again because he's not singing the same licks over and over again. That's great. Ooh, oh, 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 oh. All right, now I want to back this up. You hear a plosive where there's a recording mistake and you hear the wind go <clears throat> and you hear it hit the mic, but they chose to leave it. Check it, check it out here, listen. Yeah. Right, you hear that in it. Let's do it one more time. Hear that? Oh, oh. Here's vibrato giving away at the end. Oh, ow. Check it out. Look at look at his vibrato gives away at the end. Oh, right? Imperfect. We love that. Out of touch. Okay, let's keep going here. I'm out of time. Out of time. You know, right? <laughs> I love that too. A little Al Green in there. Ooh, wow! You're out of touch. I'm out of time. But I'm out of my head when you're not around. See, it's kind of like just some guy in the studio just kind of vamping and ad-libbing. We think of it just being, whoa, you know, this made history. It did. But it's also, again, there's so much humanness, so much flesh and blood on us, humanness, uh, that it's just doable, guys. This is doable. Check it out. My head when you're not around. I'm out of time. See, it's not that magical. It just seemed to work and we remember all the licks. Some of it is kind of trite, actually. But I do love his note choices, but it's not like, wow. You know, we hear this with Michael Jackson. There was another artist who came through that era, right? All these unique, very unique people, but. Head around. We're so alone, girl. But I'm out of my head when we're not around. Right? So now, you probably never thought about it, but here's this guy just in the studio. You have all of the energy of the track working for you, all the big backgrounds of the track, and you're just trying to embellish a little energy as the lead vocals. You probably had no idea that it's just kind of noodling, right? He's just noodling with some ad-libs, and that's kind of what creates the balance of the energy he, the contribution he brings as the lead vocalist to the track with all this other production going on. I find that interesting. Yep. Out of touch, out of time, out of touch, out of time, girl. And he's going, gosh. I've done all that. What else can I do that's different? <laughs> reach out for something to hold. Right. Okay, let's take out the word is reach, reach. Okay, let's go. reach out for something to hold. Right? Interesting stuff, guys. Too colder. 
You're too cold, girl. You're too cold, girl. Yeah, broken ass. Out of touch, out of time, out of touch, out of time, out of touch, out of time, girl. Yeah, I'm out of time. Okay, so now it's just now he kind of he kind of ran out of licks for the song, and he's just you know just kind of biting it to the end, just to kind of bring some closure to the song. Now, I want you guys to notice. Thankfully, we have this track um, that is really, really, really dry. Okay, now I want to add the track itself to this just for a second, so you can hear the dryness of the track with this. And I kind of know how he got his sound. He used some slap stuff and whatnot, um, he, some double or what, whatnot. I'm gonna show you exactly kind of a, basically how he did this, but I want to start with it you know, completely dry first. So I'm gonna turn on just the track with the track we just heard so you can hear how it sounds with the track with no effects. And then I'm gonna add some effects and I'm gonna tell you exactly what I did, all right? Check it out. Okay, now I'm gonna play it again with no effect, and then I'm gonna show you some effect that I'm gonna add, and I'll go back between the two. Check it out. Shake it up is all that we know. Using the bodies up as we go. Okay, now here's my track where what I've done is I've taken the original track and I've doubled it, I've copied and pasted it to another track and I've offset it by about four to five milliseconds and I've panned it hard left. Then I've taken that same track and I put it on another track and I've hard panned it all the way to the right and I've offset that a little more by about 10 milliseconds. So one is about five, six milliseconds, four to six milliseconds, another is about 10, so that they're not exactly the same, okay? So that the pitch of them would actually be different on both of them as they're going through. Then, I added a small amount of delay so that when you hear it in the track, you won't hear the delay. You'll just know that, that it, it, it holds it, glues it together a little bit more. Then I added a very short room reverb. There's no room in the sound. He's not, you can barely hear any room reverb on his sound. Then I added a little longer room reverb and I chopped off the low end on both of them down at around 500 cycles. I just cut off the low end because I didn't want it to be too thick. Then I added a really long hall reverb that I'm just barely putting in there and I also made that really, really bright. I added a bunch of 1 to 4K and I made it really bright. So it's very mid-rangey and bright, but that way I can put it really low in the mix and it just has a real sweet wash like he's kind of singing in a big hall, but you can't really tell. So listen closely again on a place so we're really fresh off hearing the original dry and then listen to what I did. And you're going to say, oh, wait a minute. That sounds like there's too much effect when you hear mine until you hear it with the track itself where it's hardly noticeable and it just makes it sound big and expensive. Check it out. Listen, here we go again. Shake it up is all that we know. Here's mine. Shake it up is all that we know. Using the bodies up as we go. Now, let's listen to this with the track, the difference this makes with the track. Check it out. Here's the track. Shake it up. Here's mine. Shake it up is all that we know. Using bodies up as we go. I'm waking up to fantasy. The shades all around on the colors we used to see. Broken eyes still melt in the sun. And ties that are broken often we would again. We're so alone and so difference so and again maybe it, it is a little affected and I kind of exaggerated it a little bit so that you could hear the difference of an affected version and a non affected version the goal is is to unless you're really using it for a very specific effect and you want it to be very pronounced the goal is just to make it big and classy where it's just subtle enough to where it's big and it gives a unique sound it, it fits like the delays and the reverbs all fit with the track it doesn't compete with the frequencies of the track and it's just it's just there. You kind of don't really fully notice it. Like if I didn't show you it being dry and all I did was go to the top here and I never showed you the dry version and all you heard was this. Check it out. Shake it up is all that we know. Using bodies up as we go. I'm waking up to fantasy. The shades all around on the colors we used to see. 
right? And then uh, instead of doing that, all you heard was this. Shake it up is all that we know. Using bodies up as we go. Right? See how dry and, and by the way, there's an intimacy to not using any effect. So I don't want to understate um, the fact that it's cool to have that sometimes for certain things, or if that's your sound, that's your sound. Um, but it, the goal again is to try to embellish it and make it sound like you're hearing ka -ching. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this gang and check out my next video.